Do you have a little unsolved murder in your home? Got some blackmail you want to unload? Are you the victim of some vulgar extortionist? I know a girl you should meet. She may not be the most well-known private eye in the world. And so what if it does cost you three or four thousand dollars? She sure is sweet. She's Candy Maxson. Like to meet her? Hello. Candy Madsen. Well, I wasn't sure when I looked in the mirror this morning. Had a rough night, eh? Oh, there have been rougher ones. Look, before you get caught with my receiver down, who are you and what do you want? As to I am, you'll find out very shortly. What I want is you... How romantic and over the phone yet. Let me finish. What I want is you to lay off that cable car business. Oh, that. Well, I'm afraid I can't. You see, I was sitting beside the man when they discovered his transfer had been punched. Sort of permanently. That's how things happen with me. I get into the craziest routines. You see, I used to be an actor. I'd been told I had the talent and, well, the proper displacement for such a career. But I found there wasn't enough money in it. And a girl has to eat, doesn't she? and to maintain a nice apartment in Bridgeport, and buy enough clothes to highlight the displacement I mentioned, right? Sure. So I turn private eye. You meet a better class of people, mostly named Rigor or Mortis. Take this cable car deal, for instance. Like to hear how the whole thing happened? Well, let's get started then. I wanted to get downtown that morning, but I couldn't take the F car on Marple. They were ripping up about 87 streets, which is par for the course. So I walked down Marine Drive and up to Canby. That's where the Marine Gateway cable car stops. All aboard! Come on, come on, we gotta make it to Waterfront by quitting time. The car was loaded, and so was the character next to me. I tried to budge into the seat between him and a woman who had hit the jackpot on cans she collected for the day. Couldn't quite make it. I'd forgotten my shoehorn. Say, pardon me, would you mind reading your Georgia Strait paper over that away a bit? I'd like to sit in here. <sighs> ah, night of old. He budged his hips about a quarter of an inch and I slipped in, ready for my rocket ride over the hill and down into town. The trip, as usual, was uneventful. Three smashed fenders and several choice words I'd never heard before. But I wrote him down. By the time our prairie schooner reached the turntable at Broadway, the crowd on the car had thinned out. But, uh... Buster was still beside me, his head buried in common and preferred. Broadway! I started to get down. Hey, lady, take your boyfriend with you. We're heading back up the hill. <laughs> boyfriend? I don't think so. Well, how do you like that? He fell asleep over his stocks and bonds. I looked again. Tipsy wasn't asleep. Tipsy was stone cold dead on Broadway. What a twist! I, who always went on the prowl for a whodunit, gets one tossed into my lap. Literally. You see, he just hadn't gone out of this world serene-like. Oh no. There was a steady slurp-slurp of blood trickling down his vest just north by northeast of the equator. After half an hour wait full of questioning by homicide legmen, I knew my morning shopping tour was rained out. And after all, I was only going to buy an emerald clip to match the glint in my eye. Well, that would have to wait. I knew the next step. I grabbed a cab home. I wasn't long in waiting. Right on cue. And if it was the right cue, it would be Lieutenant Ray Mallard from headquarters, daintily pressing her cuticles against my apartment buzzer. Oh, I was right. Right about what? I've been expecting you, Mallard. Come on in, sit down, take off your hat. It is off. Oh? Have a drink? No, no. I'm not in the mood. Just make it a double. You know, Candy, for once I'm puzzled. Oh, you're just saying that. Yeah, because it's true. I've checked and rechecked, and no matter how many loose ends I tie together, I still get no connection between you and Dwight Ellsworth. Dwight Whosworth? Ellsworth. 
your extremely limp traveling companion on the cable car this morning? Uh, Mallard, I can give you an angle on that. Yeah? Yeah. The angle being I didn't know him from Euclid. Level? Straight. <laughs> Look, honeypot, this mediocre dialogue is getting us nowhere. Now, what did you haul your size 11s in here for? Frankly, I don't know. Oh, here, fill it up, will you? <laughs> well, you're not just going around in circles, Mallard. You're going around in doubles. <laughs> yeah. Like I said before, Candy, you got a pretty view from here. Oh? Wait till I turn around. I mean from your window. <laughs> Look at that ship down there. Hmm? Where? Just down there. Talking after a long voyage overseas. That's romance for you. Here's your drink. Hmm. Thanks. <laughs> you know, it is sort of romantic. Don't you think it would be fun to jump on a ship like that and whisk off to the South Seas? Hmm. On a honeymoon? No. That's what I thought. South Seas? Mallard? Don't call me Mallard. <laughs> Why not? We're just playing for ducks, aren't we? Ah, <sighs> very crisp. Playing for ducks. No, Candy, we aren't. Not in this case. We got a dead man on our hands. Rudy Toot Toot shot right through the heart, and you were sitting right next to him. Yeah, sure. Sure. Now go on now, get out of here. What? You heard me. Lift your hindquarters and get back to headquarters. Candy, I don't like that look. You've got something on your mind. Yeah, yeah, but you wouldn't recognize it if I told you about it. A word of warning. Don't dabble. You're in deep enough. Got it? Got it. Here's your hat. Grab it. So long, Mallard. See you around the jailhouse sometime. Five-fo fum. Twas then I smelled a big fat fee. That big, tall, kind of attractive Mallard missed the boat. Oh, she saw it, but she missed it. It was that ship she saw docking. That was the first time I came out of the dark since my giant dipper of a ride down the hill that morning. I needed help, so I called an old friend of mine. If you can call that help. Rembrandt Watson was his name. He was a photographer, and other things. He spent most of his life in the dark room dabbling with bottles. His negatives and prints were sharp. His thought process? Not quite. But he'd given me assistance in the past, so I called him. Rembrandt Watson speaking, photography, portraits, and camera work. Yes, Rembrandt, I know. Also available for gardening, janitorial services, and dance lessons. Rembrandt, it's Candy. People. Who? Candy? <laughs> now you're tuned in. How dare you bother me? I was experimenting with a new type of plant. Ooh, indica or sativa? Indica. And candy, it works beautifully. There's a delightful little pixie in a ballet outfit in my living room. Well, leave him there and get over here immediately to my place. Take a cab, I'll pay for it. I would much rather a stretch limo with a scotch on the rocks. Mmm, you've got rocks in your head. Now just do as I say and get over here. Float in, Rembrandt. Gladly. Where's the man to take my cloak, gloves, and hat? You're wearing a sport coat and slacks, and you know I have no man. Mm, and therein lies your basic trouble, my dear. You have no man. <laughs> now, Rembrandt... Every man should have a woman, and every woman should have a man. It's the incontrovertible law of the universe. Candy, you should have a man. Mm, and you? <laughs> sure, I should. But I am no longer a man. I am a sprite, transcending the world. Well, stop transcending a moment and come down to Earth. We've got a job to do. How poetic, how idyllic. We've got a job to do. For money. Eventually? Mm, one of those. Very well, my dear. Bring me up to date. Well, I don't really know if I can or not. Good, then I shall leave and return to my formula. No, no, what I mean is the whole story is so fantastic you'd never believe it. I might. Try me, Candy. Well, I get on a cable car and sit next to a character reading the Georgia Strait. A strange coupling, a cable car and the Georgia Strait. Yeah, and we get to the end of the line. My friend next to me is dead. Mm, the ride down the hill frightened him to death? 
Nuh-uh. He looked like a used punch board. A neat little bullet hole through his heart. Candy, my handsome ballerina friend in the pink skirt, is more believable than what you've just told me. I told you it was fantastic, but none the how it happened. Now, sooner or later, Mallard is going to come out of her fog, and when she does, I'm going to be out of fee. A fee that so far doesn't exist, my pretty. It will if my hunch is right. Now, here is what I want you to do. Go down to the Chronicle and get all the back files you can on Vancouver Island Steamship Company. The Chronicle? A pleasure. I have a few questionable companions there who indulge in formulas. Mm, stay away from those companions and just do as I ask. Very well, my dove. I go, but entirely against my will. And where will you be? Down on the docks, Rembrandt. I've got to do some leg work. Let me assure you, Candy, you have just the right equipment for it, too. What a joint. I'll bet they mount the slit fish gullets on the walls instead of deer heads. Well, come on, Candy. Get your tools out and screw up your courage. What'll it be, miss? Nothing right at the moment. Except information. Information and water are both free. What do you want to know? I'm looking for the purser off the Dwight Sonius. I hear he does his shore duty in here. That's right. Named Campbell. That head on the table over there belongs to him. Thanks. Hello, sailor. Hey, Campbell. Wake up. Huh? Ah, oh, leave me alone. Come on, snap out of it. Who are you? My name is Candy Madsen. I want to ask you a question. I'm only drinking. Go away. <laughs> Not until I find out what you know. Dwight Ellsworth was murdered this morning. What? Yeah, I thought that would bring you to. <laughs> That's the nicest news I've heard in quite some time. Where does his brother live? That stooge. He's got about as much spine as a, a water eel. <laughs> Never mind. I want to find him. He seems to keep his whereabouts secret. He lives out in Point Grey, 25 uh, Dashel Road. Ask me, the whole family ought to be knocked off. Bartender, buy my friend a little reward. And one for yourself, too. Well, so far so good. Oh, how did I know about the Campbell purser? Well, I have quite a few friends in town. Most of a type my mallard doesn't approve. So, after leaving that little watering hole, I grabbed a cab and navigated the driver out towards Point Grey. It was so foggy I couldn't see the meter. But I paid him anyway and dismissed him. There it was. 25 Dashel Road, an austere-looking cabana, one that dared you to ring the front doorbell. I dared. I had the awful feeling I should have been around at the side door delivering laundry. Good evening. Except for the fog, yes. Is Mr. Ellsworth in? Yes, my husband is here, but I'm afraid this isn't a good time. There has been a death in the family. I know. That's why I'm here. Come in. Thank you. Walk this way, please. Well, damn, I'm afraid I couldn't, even if I owned a house as excessive as this one. Mind your tongue, young lady. You are in the house of an Ellsworth. Oh, hoity-toity. The lady of the manor had delusions of grandeur. Well, no need to get uppity with me. I've mingled with royalty. Why, once I had three kings in the palm of my hand at the Silver Dollar in Reno. But this ex-debutante was really something. She couldn't have been more than forty-five, yet looked something out of the Baroness of Wimpool Street. She ushered me into a high-ceilinged living room, and there on the divan was my boy. His head lowered into his hands and quite obviously touched. Quite obviously. Roger, this young lady is here to see you. I don't believe you mentioned your name. Candy Matson. Matson, you in shipping too? Um, of a sort. You'll pardon me if I don't seem hospitable, Miss Matson, but my brother was murdered. I know. I was sitting next to him when it happened. You were? Yes, Mr. Ellsworth. I don't want to take up much of your time, so I'll come right to the point. You see, I'm a private detective. Oh, 
One of those people. Now put your nose back down, Mrs. Ellsworth. Let me make my proposition. Yes, I'm a private detective, and I'm in a spot, too. The police think I'm connected to the case in some way, so I'm here for a double purpose. Okay, yes. <clears throat> Roger, I don't think you should be speaking with this... this woman. Too late, Mrs. Ellsworth. Now, I can find out who killed your brother, but it'll take some money. Give me a check now for $3,000 and I'll find the murderer. And I'll also clear myself. Well, I, I don't know. Naturally, you want to see the killer of your brother brought to justice, don't you, Mr. Ellsworth? Roger! Don't you? Uh, yes, uh, yes, of course. I'll make you out a check uh, right now. Thanks. Just make it out to Candy Madsen. Payable today. Oh, that's quite a lovely rifle on the wall, Mr. Ellsworth. Do you hunt much? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, that's an antique. The whole family is quite fond of shooting. Ah, there you are. Thank you. I'll be in touch with you sometime tomorrow. The missus didn't say another word. She just stood there against the fireplace and shot sparks through me. After I waved the check in the air a few times to dry the ink, she showed me to the door. Very clever, aren't you? Taking advantage of a weak-willed man. Yeah, I wonder who made him that way. Don't cash that check. I mean it. Don't cash that check. Mrs. Ellsworth, three thousand dollars. I need the money badly. I need some new rolls for my player piano. I buzzed back downtown. I wanted to cash that check in a hurry. I knew of only one person who would give me bills of many colors at that hour. Uncle Charlie, the honest miller who ran the chase room. Uncle Charlie, in the strict sense of the word, was a gentleman. So with a tender little pat on my cheek, he cashed the check, and I went up to Bridgeport and home. All of a sudden, my eyes did a couple of inverted loops. All my lights were on. Who's in here? All right, speak up. Ah, oh, Candy, light of my life, come join our party. Oh, Rembrandt, you gave me a scare. You don't scare easy either, Candy. Got something on your mind? Oh, and Mallard's here too. How ducky, a midnight soiree. What goes on here? Well, the chicken you had in the fridge is delicious. Yeah, it was delicious. Looks like you've done everything but eat the bones. I couldn't help it, Candy. I get snackish. Want some? No. Now, come on, what gives? That's my line, Candy. What gives? You're in on something and I want to know about it. Oh, Mallard, believe me, it's nothing. I'm just trying to parlay a couple of hunches. Tall hunches. Look at all those clippings on Vancouver Island Steamship Company. Pray tell, what are those for? I meant to tell you, Candy, I had remarkable success down at the Chronicle. There's everything you want on that steamship line. Oh, Rembrandt, did you have to tell the whole world? Candy, you chide me unnecessarily. I merely had the clippings on the table when Hawkshaw here walked in on me. Okay, Candy, take it from there. No, nothing makes sense yet, Mallard, so there's nothing to tell, really. Really? How about where were you tonight? Here and there. I knew I should have put a man on you. Save some grief. Mm, two men would be better, I think. Two days. That's all, Mallard. Just give me two days to tie off about four loose ends, and I think I'll have it worked out. <sighs> all right. But don't forget, the boys down at Canby Street headquarters don't love you the way I do. Two days, no more, no less. I gotta go. Thanks for the foul chicken. Rembrandt, here's 500 bucks for you. Five hundred, my word. What's all this talk about a recession? Go on, take it. Go someplace and stabilize the economy. I whipped through the old newspaper clippings. It was all there. Fire at sea on Ellsworth's ship. Two seamen lost off Ellsworth's ship near Honolulu. South Sea Island line ship loses rudder in storm. On and on it went over a period of three years. The next morning, just as the steam clock whistled to announce 8 o'clock to downtown Vancouver, I got Rembrandt on the phone. Candy, what on earth are you calling me for at this hour? Can't help it. There's work to be done. I did my work last night so extremely well, I might add, that I'm just going to bed now. Sorry, you'll have to delay your sack time. 
Meet me at the corner of Marine Drive and Canby in ten minutes, right where the cable car stops. Ugh, now what are we going to do? We're going to take a cable car ride. What? On one of those bouncy, junky little contraptions? Not with the way I feel this morning. Marine Drive and Canby in ten minutes. All right, Rembrandt. Get on. This is the silliest thing you've ever done, Candy. Maybe. We'll see. Dwight Ellsworth was already on the car when I got on here. And alive. How could you tell? He mumbled something when I asked him to move over. Okay, sounds logical. Although I once remember stumbling into a corpse who mumbled for hours. Rembrandt was in one of his rambling moods, so I let him. The car pulled over Marine Drive, down Camby, and then down the hill. Now I watched the buildings and apartments carefully. There was a little red brick building, now a big apartment house, a woman's residence club, and so on. Then over the hill and more apartments and the possibilities petered out at Broadway. Well, only one thing to do. Canvas all those blocks between King Edward and Broadway. Okay, Rembrandt, off the car. Yes, the strangest corpse I ever did see. What did you say, Candy? Off the car, come on. Ugh, now what? I just want to go to bed. Well, not for a long time, boy, Blue. Now here's the pitch. You take this building, and I'll take the next. We'll alternate as we go along. Ask if a tall woman with a horsey face dressed something like Queen Victoria ever lived around here. Oh, Candy. I know it sounds wild, but it's got to be done. A horse with a tall face dressed like... Rembrandt, look at me. Get that smoke out of your brain. A tall woman with a horsey face and dressed something like Queen Victoria. You got it? Got it. Okay, get going. It was slow and tiresome. Oh, and the answers I got. A tall gal dressed like Queen Victoria. Oh, sister. That was about par. Nope. Nobody like that ever lived here. Are you positive? A dame who fits that description, yeah. I'm positive. The morning wore on, and so did we. We were over on the other side of Broadway now, so we stopped and had a bite to eat. I had pickles with mine, and Rembrandt had olives on toothpicks in a glass. And again, we picked up the hunt. My heart was suddenly making with a rumba. There, just on the other side of Olympic Village, in front of a three-story condo, was a police squad car. There was a little knot of people gathered around. I walked down the block and up the front steps. I didn't have any trouble finding the room. The door was wide open and there was a body on the floor. Four representatives of the law were buzzing back and forth. One of the buzzees was Mallard. Well, my little ambassador of violence, why is it you're always around the extremely dead candy? I've got no time to brandy the ad-libs, Mallard. Who is it? Don't know yet. No identification. Let me see. <gasps> ah. A pen pal, maybe? Oh, I was right! I knew it! Knew it? Knew what? You're right. He was a pen pal. He wrote me a check last night for $3,000. His name was Roger Ellsworth. Very interesting. Must be open season on Ellsworth. Okay, Candy. Time you filled in the blanks. Start. Wait a minute. I want to look at the window here. Mm-hmm. Mallard, there are a couple younger Ellsworths living around town. I'm sure you'd like to see them stay healthy. Well, yeah. Now get out to 25 Dashell Road and pick up a stuck-up crone also named Ellsworth. Five will get you 20. She's the one you're after. All right. But you get back to your place and stay put. I want to have a more illuminating chat with you. Oh, Mallard, I'm just like putty in your hands. The moon was coming up in the distance and spraying rays of silver on the inlet. Still no mallard. I wondered what could be wrong. This was it. This was the showdown. Have you seen a Victorian dressed horse with a tall face? Oh, Rembrandt! Candy, I'm so mad at you I could... Ugh, what's the use? Now, what's the matter? What's the matter, she says. I've been roving all over Camby Street ringing doorbells. Where did you go, you traitor? Oh, Rembrandt, I'm sorry. In the excitement, I forgot to tell you. What excitement? 
There's been another murder. In a moment, there's going to be another. I'm looking right at you, Candy. Oh, cool off. Have some formula and stop snorting steam. <gasps> what was that? The window, Candy. It just shattered. What? Oh, wait a minute. That window didn't shatter by itself. Quick, get the lights, Rembrandt. Now duck down here. What sort of silly game are we playing now? Oh, this isn't a game, believe me. Candy? Candy, are you all right? Ooh, yikes, it's the gumshoe. Yes, I'm all right. Where are you, Mallard? Over here. Two houses over. We've got your girlfriend trapped on the roof next to you. Don't move and stay covered. Okay. All right, Mrs. Ellsworth. Are you coming down peacefully or do we have to play cops and robbers? I'm not coming down till I get that candy medicine. Have it your way. Okay, loosen her up a bit, boys. Is it the Festival of Lights already? Keep your head down, Rembrandt. Oh, is that what was up? Ready to come down, Rena? No, I'm not. That hateful woman. She's ruined all my plans with her snooping and prying. She's going to die, I tell you. It was a miracle, Candy. You must have moved slightly just as she shot at you. It was too close, let me tell you. She's dead? Oh, decidedly. I think she was dead before she hit the ground. What happened? Well, we went out to her house and she was just driving off. We trailed her to Marpole, lost her for a block, and then spotted her car at the top of the hill here. We arrived just as she was getting on the roof next door. Okay, now you tell me your little dream. Well, it was that ship docking that set my wheels going around. The name Ellsworth started burning in back somewhere. You saw the clippings Rembrandt dug up. Yeah. The Vancouver Island steamship line was slowly being sabotaged. I did some checking and found that the insurance companies weren't going to renew. I don't know why I didn't tie that in sooner. It's just that you had too many things on your mind, Mallard dear. <laughs> I went out to the place on Dashell Road, and when I left, I was pretty sure the old girl had knocked off her brother-in-law. Why? Well, for several reasons. One, she was a venomous old witch. Two, you've never seen such an enormous gun safe in all your life. And according to Roger Ellsworth, they both enjoyed using them. I noticed one little pop gun left out that was very interesting. Had a silencer on it. Uh-huh. That was the one she used on you tonight. Mm -hmm. And also the one she used on Dwight Ellsworth from the window of that condo where you found her husband. How do you know? Go back there. You'll see a nice little bullet hole in the curtain with burned powder all around it. Now don't tell me. Yes, I'm telling you that they rented that place knowing Dwight Ellsworth always went downtown on a certain cable car. She waited that morning until we were riding by, and she popped him. I have now heard everything. Not everything. The reason? Dwight Ellsworth, rather than fighting the insurance company, had decided to sell the steamship line. The old gal thought she'd beat him to the punch by knocking him off. The company would then fall into her husband's hands. But what about her husband? At first I thought he was just another weak-kneed man with an overbearing wife to strut over his brother's death, but now I'm not so sure. No? No. Not when I think about that phone call. What phone call? Oh, just another little detail that slipped my mind until now. I'll bet. I got a phone call the day after I met with the Ellsworths in Point Grey, telling me to lay off the case. Looking back on it, that call could only have been placed by Roger Ellsworth. So despite all the boo-hoo-hoo tears, looks like he was in on it from the very beginning. Then, with me poking around, they probably got nervous. And at some point, Rena no longer trusted her husband and decided she'd be better off without him. No honor among killers. Somehow, she lured him down to that place in Olympic Village and gave him some lead poisoning, too, planning to inherit the whole caboodle herself. And to be sure she was safe, I was next in her sights. But I don't get why Ellsworth paid you to look into something he'd want to keep hush-hush. Well, it'd look suspicious if he refused help finding his brother's killer. And I don't think he planned on me living long enough to figure out the scheme or cash the check. Then he cashed out first, thanks to his wife, who saved me some trouble. Trouble? If she hadn't killed him, I was going to. What? <laughs> While I was waiting for you to get here, the phone rang. It was Uncle Charlie at the chase room. Roger Ellsworth's check bounced like a brand new golf ball. <laughs> What's so funny, Mallard? Listen in again to the adventures of Candy Matson, girl sucker. Hey. Hey. 
Candy Matson 2021 was produced, directed, and edited by Briar Rhodes. Candy Matson was played by Callan Dorval. Detective Mallard was played by Melanie Germain. Rembrandt Watson was played by Chris Canther. Raina Ellsworth was played by Stephanie Bruneau. Roger Ellsworth and additional voices were played by Jeff Cooper. Campbell was played by Leonard Zane. The opening announcer and additional voices were by Rabbit Richards. The cable car operator was played by Mike Cuellar. The bartender and additional voices were by Priscilla Costa. Original script and story by Monty Masters, updated by Briar Rhodes and Callan Dorval. Full music and sound credit list can be found in the description of this audio drama. Thank you for listening. Now to get back to my formula.